the movie starts off with a spaceship flying through space. An encoded message is received by the onboard AI causing it to initiate the wake-up call for the crew. We are shown the crew having a meal and coffee after waking up from cryosleep, but they have no idea what they will be dealing with on their mission. The crew consists of Ellen Ripley, Captain Arthur Dallas, Joan Lambert, Samuel Brett, Gilbert Kane, Ash, and Dennis Parker. After waking up and having a meal, we find out they are just finishing up a mission and should be close to home base. The problem is that they discover they are not even in the right solar system and fail to contact anyone over communications. A meeting is called as the captain explains that the ship's AI, called Mother, has stopped them halfway on their trip because she detected a transmission from an unknown origin. They aren't even sure if it's human or foreign transmission. Due to a policy rule in the contract that says they must investigate any possible intelligent origin. After inspecting the planet on screens, the crew loads up in a separate spaceship and starts heading to the foreign planet. Using some screens that only a 386DX could display, they fail hard with the landing as fires occur and a whole breach from a Feathersoft landing has occurred. Parker and Brett tell them it'll take at least 25 hours to repair the damage, we're also shown they still have no communication with anyone. Dallas, Kane and Lambert suit up and grab some gear to head out while Ash monitors them from the ship. During their exploration, they make visual contact with a crashed spaceship in the distance. The three then approach the ship to examine it, but as they enter it, Ash loses communication with them. After climbing up a wall inside the ship, they find a fossilized pilot of the ship that looks to have exploded from the inside of its body. Back on the ship, Ripley informs Ash that Mother has deciphered some of the transmission, and it looks more like a warning than a SOS. Ripley wants to warn the team, but Ash stops her. Now the team has sent Kane over a wall to find a nest of eggs. He notices that there is movement in the eggs containing organic life but before he gets to take a sample, the egg opens up. After poking his head over the egg, something jumps out and latches onto his helmet. The scene then flips over to Dallas and Lambert bringing Kane back to the ship, but Ripley tells them they need to do a 24-hour quarantine. After saying no multiple times, Ash ends up opening the hatch anyway, but we know he is hiding something from the rest of the crew. Once Kane's helmet is removed, we find a small alien attached to Kane's face. The rest of the crew wants to freeze Kane and help him out with better medical equipment back home, but Ash rejects them and then attempts to remove the alien. The tail of the alien wraps tighter around Kane's neck when Ash grabs one of the alien legs. Dallas wants to remove the alien but Ash wants to study it before trying to remove it, Dallas says he'll take responsibility. As soon as Ash cuts the alien's leg with a laser, it pours out an acid that starts dissolving a hole on the floor but stops three floors down before breaching the hole. We now know that these aliens have acid in their blood which melts everything it touches instantly. They leave the alien alone for now, so Kane studies the alien as Ripley walks up on him. She reminds him about disobeying orders and that by doing so, he could have just put the whole crew in danger. Later that night, Ash calls Dallas and Ripley to come down to the med bay because the alien has detached from Kane and is now missing. Dallas checks Kane for a pulse and they start looking for the little alien. While searching very carefully, the alien ends up falling down on Ripley's shoulder from above, but they find out it is dying. Ash takes it to the lab and starts to examine the alien, but Ripley wants to kill it and get rid of it. Dallas, the captain of the ship, lets Ash make the call due to him being the science guy. Ripley doesn't like this at all, after finding out they have repaired enough of the ship to leave and make it back to their mother ship. They ascend from the planet and continue their journey back home with an unconscious cane. Lambert lets them know that it will take 10 months before they make it back to Earth when Ash calls them to let them know Kane has woken up. Everyone is excited for Kane as he seems fine and insists on having a meal because he's feeling hungry. After taking a few bites, Kane starts to cough and choke. They lay him on his back as a new type of baby alien comes bursting out like a jack in the box. After staring at everyone, it jumps across a table and slithers away. After failing at a small search, they wrap Kane's body and eject him out into space for their safety. They split into two groups of three and started searching for the alien using rope nets and electrified rods. 
After checking a door, they detect a movement behind it, but the cat ends up running past them frightening Brett when the door opens. Parker tells him he needs to go get the cat so they don't detect him again. Brett heads back for the cat while Ripley and Parker continue forward. While Brett searches for the cat, we find out its name is Jonesy. He finds the cat but it's startled away exposing the alien's skin in his shed. After finding the cat in a corner, Brett tries to call it out while we see one of the world's first scary alien introductions to movies drop down behind him like a ninja. After noticing the cat is afraid of something behind him, he stands up to come face to face with an adult-sized alien creature. After a loud yell, the alien takes him up some chains as Parker and Ripley come running inside to find some red water dripping from above. Parker tells them it was huge, bigger than a grown man. They decide to try and use heat to lure it out of the ducts and into the airlock. Dallas is sent through the air ducts with a makeshift flamethrower to force the alien to the airlock. Lambert tells Dallas she detects it in the area, but as he heads down she loses sight of it. She insists it has to be very close to him, but he cannot find it. She then detects it moving towards him as she tells him to start moving. That was a bad idea because he ends up within hugging distance once he makes it down the stairs. Parker is then shown putting Dallas's flamethrower on the table saying this was all that was there, no Dallas, no blood, no nothing he exclaims. Ripley ends up telling them they will pair up and flush out the alien together, but first, she logs into Mother and uses her new captain access to find out the crew is expendable. Ash has orders to bring back the alien to Earth while disregarding the crew's life, now that would hurt my feelings. He ends up locking Ripley in the room, she gives him a solid whack, but at this point we find out he doesn't bleed red. After overpowering her, Parker and Lambert end up running into the room struggling to save Ripley. That is until Parker removes the robot's head from its body using a fire extinguisher. After rigging him up to a power source, Ripley turns his head back on for answers on how to kill the alien. Ash tells them it cannot be killed and it is a perfect specimen, what a waste of time. Once he's turned off, the three crew members left decide they will blow up Mother and take their chances on the shuttle ship. Ripley will get the shuttle ready while Parker and Lambert grab the needed coolant for the trip. She hears the cat Jonesy and heads off to search for him, what a hero. After finding the kitty, she places him in the cat carrier, we know it's a him because she says come here boy. During the loading of coolant, the alien ends up creeping up on her causing her to lock up in fear while Parker yells for her to get out of the way. Before it gets to do anything to Lambert, Parker comes running at it just to get knocked down with a credit card swipe of its tail. Parker yells for Lambert to get out of the room before being speared by the alien. As Ripley runs to their location, the screams of Lambert come to a stop, just for her to arrive and see both of their bodies. She runs and activates the self-detonation on the mother's ship. She has 10 minutes to get in the shuttle and leave. On the way she hears a noise and finds Dallas and Brett wrapped in some kind of cocoon. Dallas asks for her to kill him because he doesn't want to give birth to a baby alien. She torches the nest and starts to head back towards the shuttle with Jonesy, but ends up finding herself cut off by the alien, forcing her to retreat backwards. At that moment, she forgot she even had poor Jonesy with her and left him behind. She tries to turn off self-detonation on Mother, but fails to make it in time and is five minutes before detonation. She heads back towards the shuttle, finds Jonesy alive and prepares the shuttle for launch with one minute remaining. She launches and clears the explosion with just seconds remaining. After a few Atari graphic explosions, Ripley says, I got you. It's time for Jonesy to go into cryosleep, but while preparing herself, she finds the alien hiding in a shelf and runs to a small room and gets into a spacesuit. She notices the alien is stuck and uses some kind of gas to hurt the alien until it forces itself out of the opening. Using the seatbelt to keep her in the chair, she opens the airlock, but the alien hangs in the doorway. Ripley uses a grapple gun to send the alien out of the room and ends up blasting it with the thrusters, sending it out to space for good. She makes a recording report saying all of the crew is dead, and the cargo was destroyed, and then signs off for cryosleep, ending the movie. Let me know what you thought of the movie in the comments, and what movies you would like to see recap next. As always, thank you for watching and please support us by liking the video and subscribing to our channel, it really helps us grow.
Until the next recap, stay safe.